O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. Amen. O Lord, have mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. Bless your ministers with righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fights for us, but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, do not take your Holy Spirit from us. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapter 6 David again assembled all the best men in Israel, 30,000 in number. David and all the men who were with him travelled up to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of Hosts who sits enthroned between the cherubim that are on it. They loaded the Ark of God on a new hot cart and carried it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. They brought it with the Ark of God up from the house of Abinadab on the hill. Ahio was standing in front of the ark, 
while David and all Israel were energetically celebrating before the Lord, singing and playing various stringed instruments, tambourines, rattles and cymbals. When they arrived at the threshing floor of Nikon, Uzzah reached out and grabbed hold of the Ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord was so furious with Uzzah, he killed him on the spot for his negligence. He died right there beside the Ark of God. David was angry because the Lord attacked Uzzah, and so he called that place Pereth Uzzah, which remains its name to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How will the Ark of the Lord ever come to me? So David was no longer willing to bring the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. David left it in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months. And the Lord blessed him and all his family. David was told that the Lord has blessed the family of Obed-Edom and everything he owns because of the ark of God. So David went and joyfully brought the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. Those who carried the Ark of the Lord took six steps, and then David sacrificed an ox and a fat calf. David, wearing a linen ephod, was dancing with all his strength before the Lord. David and all Israel were bringing up the Ark of the Lord, shouting and blowing trumpets. As the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Saul's daughter, Michal, looked out of the window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him. They brought the ark of the Lord and put it in its place in the middle of the tent that David had pitched for it. Then David offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Lord. When David finished offering the burnt sacrifices and peace offerings. He pronounced a blessing over the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. He then handed out to each member of the entire assembly of Israel, men and women, a portion of bread, a date cake and a raisin cake. Then all the people went home. When David went home to pronounce a blessing on his own house, Michal, Saul's daughter, came out to meet him. She said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself this day. He has exposed himself today before his servants, slave girls, the way a vulgar fool might do. David replied to Michel, It was before the Lord. I was celebrating before the Lord who chose me over your father and his entire family, appointing me as leader over the Lord's people, Israel. I am willing to shame and humiliate myself even more than this. But with the slave girls whom you mentioned, let me be distinguished. And Michal, Saul's daughter, had no children to the day of her death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 23. Then the whole group rose up and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man subverting our nation, forbidding us to pay the tribute tax to Caesar, claiming that he himself is Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they persisted in saying, He incites people by the teaching that he has given throughout all Judea. It started in Galilee and it has ended up here. Now when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learnt that he was from Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod who also happened to be in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, as he had heard about him, and was hoping to see him perform some miraculous sign. So Herod questioned him at considerable length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the experts in the law were there, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, dressing him in elegant clothes, Herod sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other, for prior to this they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. When I examined him before you, I did not find this man guilty of anything that you accused him of doing. Neither did Herod, 
for he sends him back to us. Look, he has done nothing deserving death, and I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they shouted out together, Take this man away, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept on shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what wrong has he done? I have found him guilty of no crime deserving death. I will flog him and release him. But they were insistent, demanding with loud shouts that he be crucified. And their shouts prevailed. Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. But he handed Jesus over to their will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Collect for Peace O God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The Collect for our safe preservation. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that which is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, let me accept calmly all that this day might bring me, and let me devote myself completely to your sacred will. Direct me and help me each hour of this day. Control my thoughts and feelings in all my deeds and words. When unpredictable circumstances arise, do not let me forget that everything comes from you. Lord Jesus, Son of God, it is better not to live than to live without you. I thank you, God, for the gift of this new day and for all the good deeds you will help me do today. Holy Spirit, help me to dedicate this day to my Lord and Saviour. Teach me to be just toward my brother and sister, never to provoke wrath or cause sorrow. Control my will and teach me to pray, to believe, to hope, to suffer, to forgive and to love. Amen. We pray for the work of your faithful servants throughout the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen.